I have always wanted to use an OLED TV as a PC monitor, but they've been a bit too expensive. However, last year I found this LG G3 OLED on massive discount and yeah, I bought it. And after using it as a TV slash PC monitor for almost half a year, I must say that I'm sold. The picture quality is just extraordinary and if you are upgrading from an LCD slash LED display, I'd say there is absolutely no comparison. OLED TVs are awesome. And turns out, LG OLED TVs are fantastic PC slash gaming monitors because of features like NVIDIA G-Sync, super low input latency, and HDMI 2.1. And as you can see, I'm using one as my PC monitor. So in this video, I'm gonna go over a couple of important settings that you should tweak and turn on to get the best experience and to prevent burn-in if you plan on using an OLED TV as a PC monitor. Now, before we begin, I'm assuming that you've got a decent graphics card which comes with an HDMI 2.1 port and that you are also using an HDMI 2.1 certified cable. If you don't, you aren't gonna get the full chroma subsampling at 4K 120Hz. Now, after all of this, once you've got your TV hooked up to the PC, you must enable Chroma 444 pass-through. If you haven't, you can do this by going into the settings of your TV then general, then scroll down to external devices, then HDMI settings and inside, make sure 444 pass through is enabled. This setting is extremely important. So the next thing you want to do is head on into HDMI deep color and also switch this on for the HDMI port you've got your PC plugged in. These two settings is what enables the real 4K 120Hz with proper. Chroma 444 subsampling plus HDR on LG OLED TVs. Lastly, head on into the NVIDIA control panel and select change resolution and make sure that you've selected 3840 into 2160 under PC and set the refresh rate to 120Hz and also double check what it says in the output color format. If it says RGB, then you're good to go. You've got proper 4K at 120Hz along with full chroma 444 subsampling. Additionally, you can also increase the color depth from 8 to 10 bit. Although from what I've learned is that this won't make much of a difference for HDR content. And finally, you can also enable G-Sync by clicking on Setup G-Sync and make sure that the setting is enabled. And that's it. Your OLED TV has been transformed into an awesome 4K 120Hz PC monitor. Now, there's a lot of misunderstanding about burn-in and how you should be using an OLED TV as a PC monitor, but the reality of it is, the technology has gotten so good that you shouldn't be worried about burn-in as long as you use the TV for mixed type of content, like playing games, doing productivity tasks, and watching videos and photos. However, there are still a few precautions that you must take to minimize permanent image retention aka burn-in in the long run. Like, you should start by enabling a setting which automatically hides the Windows taskbar. This is kind of essential because the taskbar with all of its icons is always there no matter what you're doing on the PC. And if you leave it there all the time, it's gonna cause permanent burn-in in the long run. So, what you wanna do is, right click on the taskbar and then head on into the taskbar settings. Here, click on taskbar behaviors and enable automatically hide the taskbar. So this is going to prevent the bottom part of the OLED display from getting permanently burned in. The next thing you want to do is set a screensaver. And you want to set something that is appropriate for an OLED display. Something that doesn't contain any static items. You basically have two choices, mystify and the ribbons screensaver. This one is my recommendation because it looks absolutely stunning on the OLED display. Now, if you want to take one step further, you can set this to blank and this is going to put up a black image on the screen in which all of the pixels are switched off, thus no pixel degradation. Although I'm not sure how effective this is since the TV is still on and receiving signal from the PC. So instead, I would suggest leaving the screensaver running when you are going to be away for a couple of minutes and rather Switch your TV off when you're not going to be at your desk for more than 10 to 15 minutes. 
For anything less, just leave the screensaver running. And guys, if you're listening to music or podcast, you can tap on the settings button on the remote and select the screen off option. And this switches off the OLED panel, but everything else including sound keeps playing through the TV speakers. And this can be very useful in situations where you want to use your TV to listen to music or a podcast. Also, I don't use the turn off display option under power options in Windows because then the TV starts playing this slideshow whenever the PC stops outputting a video signal. And here's a hidden feature for you guys. You can actually switch off this slideshow if you wish to. All you have to do is repeatedly tap on the mute button on the magic remote until you see this hidden menu. And from here, switch off no signal image. And now you will not get that slideshow whenever your PC stops outputting a video signal or when you put the PC to sleep. However, you still get the no signal message. So this is why I don't use the turn off display setting in Windows. I'd rather just switch the TV off whenever I'm not using my PC for an extended period of time. Also, changing the wallpaper every now and then is also gonna help since you won't have the same image on the screen all the time. You can actually set up your very own wallpaper slideshow on Windows 11. All you have to do is select the photos that you wanna set, right click and set as desktop background. And that's it. Now you should be able to cycle through these by right clicking on the desktop and then selecting next desktop background. You can also set the wallpaper change duration by going into personalize, then background and here set the change picture option to one day. This is actually more useful than you think it is because parts of your wallpaper will be visible on the screen when you're doing something on your PC. So changing it every day makes sense so that these parts of the screen also get a different image. You can also download something called Wallpaper Engine on Steam and this is gonna allow you to set animated wallpapers on your Windows PC. And some of these actually look stunning on the OLED display. You also get multiple settings and tweaks. I particularly like the ability to change the brightness of the wallpaper. Now some of you might find the animation a bit distracting. But hold on, you can select the shimmer wallpaper and tweak its setting so that it's barely moving. So this is gonna be way less distracting and it's still gonna protect your OLED display from burn-in because the wallpaper is still moving. Now this might seem as a bit extreme, but as an added precaution, you can also hide your desktop icons by right clicking on the desktop, view and uncheck show desktop icons. And as you can see, that hides the desktop icons. Now if you can't live without the desktop icons, then what you can do is place them near the center of the screen where they will be covered by the open windows. So this way you won't have anything static showing up on the edges of your display. The way I do it is that I leave all of the icons the way they are on the desktop. I don't even move them to the center of the screen. Rather, I just hide them whenever I know the desktop is showing and I just re-enable them whenever I need something from my desktop. And uh, if you haven't already, you also might want to switch on the dark mode. But yeah, that's pretty much all you need to do on the PC side of things. Now we're going to move on to the settings and the things that you should do on your TV. Now this one might seem a bit trivial, but the first thing you should do is remove the protective film from the screen of your TV. You see, this film is only meant to be there to protect the screen from fingerprints while the TV is being installed. And if you leave the film on, you are gonna miss out on one of the most important feature of your TV, that is its anti-reflective property. You can clearly see the difference in the glare from the part which have taken the film off. So if you wanna enjoy your TV the way it's meant to be enjoyed, then get rid of the protective film. So this makes quite a major difference when it comes to glare and reflections. And as a hidden benefit, you will also operate your TV at a lower brightness since there aren't many reflections on the screen. Which brings me to the second point, the screen brightness. 
Now brightness is subjective and everyone has their own preferences and it also depends on how much ambient light you've got in your room. And I've been running this TV at 22% brightness which I feel is more than enough when I'm using the TV for work and for web browsing. And while gaming, I crank the brightness up to 30 to 40%. Now do keep in mind that I'm not a gamer and this TV is mainly being used as a PC monitor for work and for watching YouTube and Netflix. But you know what? At the end of the day, I would suggest keeping your OLED TV brightness setting to what you think works out best for you. But I would avoid going over 50% while in Windows because of the static items on the screen. But hey, feel free to crank the brightness up when you are watching a movie or browsing through photos. I've always got the brightness turned way up when I'm watching HDR content. That's where OLED TVs really shine. Now, after a long gaming or work session, you might see something that resembles a burn-in. It's gonna be very faint and visible on a dark grey background. I don't know if you can see this on camera, but there is a very faint outline right here, which kind of looks like a burn-in. But it's actually not. This is temporary image retention which will go away on its own whenever you switch your TV off and leave it off for a couple of hours. Which brings me to another super important thing, which is, you should never, ever switch off your OLED TV from the wall outlet, especially after long gaming sessions. This is because the TV does OLED panel maintenance, like running the pixel cleaner while the TV is on standby, which clears out any temporary image retention. LG OLED TVs do this whenever you've got a total of 4 hours worth of watch time. And this happens when the TV is on standby. So don't ever switch off your OLED TV from the wall outlet. Instead, power off using the remote and leave it on standby. That way, the TV will do panel maintenance which will extend the overall lifespan of your OLED TV. You're also gonna notice that the screen moves from time to time. This is completely normal and it's one of the ways the TV prevents burn-in by shifting the entire screen. I've sped up this video 6000% so you guys can see what happens, but this is not something that you will notice in real life. But it's very interesting to see the screen shift feature in action. And obviously, this being an OLED TV comes with a bunch of features which helps prevent burn-in. And you can access them by going into the settings, then general, select OLED care and finally head on into OLED panel care. And all of these should be on by default. And also you've got the option of manually running the pixel cleaner, which you don't really need to do because the TV will run the pixel cleaner by itself whenever it needs to. So, enjoy your OLED TV without worrying about burn-in or manually running any of these settings. Now, the next thing you should do is, under General, head on into the System Settings and then Additional Settings, then Home Settings, and here, switch off Home Promotion and Content Recommendation. This is gonna get rid of the ads and recommended content on the TV's homepage. I also don't have any of the AI services enabled and frankly I don't really care much for these because I don't want the TV to touch the original sound or the picture which is coming from my PC. Now speaking of picture, I usually have HDR off and I run the TV in the standard picture mode which provides the best picture quality without any fancy enhancements. And trust me, you don't want any contrast enhancer or any motion smoothness when you are using the TV as a PC monitor. And besides, most of the enhancements will be automatically disabled by the TV itself whenever it senses that a PC is plugged in into the HDMI port. Now, I'm not going to go through all of the picture settings because I think everyone has their own preferences and you should set these according to what's comfortable for you. However, if you guys want, I'll make a separate video about the picture settings that I'm using, so leave a comment if you want to see a video on the picture settings. Also, I do have the reduced blue light feature enabled because it does reduce quite a bit of eye strain. And finally, make sure that you've got the latest firmware updates installed on the TV. This is very important because newer firmware contains bug fixes and new features. Now because my TV is from 2023, it took multiple updates to get it up to speed. But yeah, make sure that you've got the latest software installed on your LG OLED TV. 
Alright guys, that's it. I really hope this video clears out any of the doubts that you might have about using an OLED TV as a PC monitor and what to expect. And hopefully, the settings that I've shown you will help prevent screen burn-in in the long run. And to be very honest, you should not be afraid of using an OLED TV as a PC monitor because the picture quality these TVs offer is actually phenomenal. So enjoy your OLED TV as a PC monitor, play games, watch videos and yeah, do subscribe to the channel. And if you've got any suggestions or any additional input, leave them in the comments down below. This is Tech Guy Charlie, signing off.